This video is part of Consumer Theory. In it, I'll show you how to extend the model we've built for Consumer Theory to show how households make labor supply decisions. In our model of Consumer Theory, consumers are assumed to maximize their utility, where utility is derived only from consumption of goods X and Y. Maximizing utility is subject to a budget constraint which says expenditure on consumption must equal income. Now suppose instead that utility comes from leisure time as well as consumption. The consumer's budget constraint still says expenditure on consumption equals income, but now looks like this. The left-hand side of the budget constraint still represents expenditure, where P is the per unit price of consumption and C is the amount of consumption. The right-hand side still represents income, where W times H equals wage earnings, or the wage rate the worker gets paid for every hour of work times the number of hours she works. She might also have income from non-labor sources, such as a spouse's income, an allowance, or government assistance. The consumer also faces a time constraint which says the total amount of hours available must equal or sum up to hours spent working and hours spent in leisure. Since hours of labor and hours of leisure are inversely related, the more time you spend in leisure, the less time you have to work, we can derive a household's labor supply by looking at its leisure demand. To derive the demand for anything, we need to change that thing's price, holding all else constant. So to derive the leisure demand curve, we must change first the price of leisure. The wage rate is that price of leisure. That's because the wage rate is the opportunity cost of choosing to spend time in leisure rather than working. For every hour that I choose to watch Netflix, that's an hour I could have worked instead. And so the wage rate, or what I would have been paid for my time working that hour, is how much it cost me to watch Netflix. Now consider what would happen when the wage rate goes up. To see how this affects the budget line, let's start by thinking through the intercepts. The leisure intercept is the total amount of time available to a person. Increasing the wage rate doesn't give the person more time and so can't change the leisure intercept. On the other hand, the consumption intercept represents how much consumption the person can afford when she leisures none of the time and so works all of the time. Now increasing the wage rate does increase the intercept because if you work all the time, getting paid a higher wage allows you to afford more stuff. So we see a rotation in the budget line. How does this affect the consumer's choice of leisure? To understand that, we need to return to the tools of income and substitution effects. On the one hand, when the price of leisure goes up, the consumer wants to substitute away from leisure since it's more expensive and therefore work more hours per day. On the other hand, when the wage rate goes up, the consumer feels richer and so wants to buy more of all goods that are normal, including leisure. The consumer feels like she can afford more leisure and so works fewer hours. What ultimately happens, or the total effect, when the price of leisure goes up, therefore depends on the magnitudes of these two effects. What we see here is the case where the substitution effect outweighs the income effect. The voice in the worker's head that says, hey, leisure time's more expensive, outweighs the voice in the consumer head that says, hey, we can afford to spend more time in leisure. And ultimately what happens when the wage rate goes up is that the consumer will leisure less and therefore work more.
In this case, there's a positive relationship between hours of work and the wage rate, giving us an upward sloping labor supply curve. On the other hand, in this case, the income effect is seen to outweigh the substitution effect. The voice in the consumer's head that says, now we can afford more leisure when the wage rate goes up, overpowers the voice in the consumer's head that says, leisure time's more expensive. In this case, the total effect of the wage increase is for the consumer to leisure more and therefore work less. With this negative or inverse relationship between the wage rate and hours of work, we see a labor supply curve that's downward sloping. It's possible that the substitution effect might dominate the income effect for relatively low wage rates, giving us an upward sloping labor supply, whereas for higher wage rates, the income effect might dominate the substitution effect, giving us a downward sloping labor supply. In such cases, we get what's called a backwards bending labor supply curve, one that shows initially as the wage rate goes up that the substitution effect dominates the income effect, causing the person to work more hours. But eventually for high enough wages, as the wage goes up, the income effect now dominates the substitution effect, causing the consumer to work fewer hours.